Hello everybody, welcome back to our life, beginnings and always. And uh, let's see where we left off at. Uh, we did, uh, yeah, we did the summer work where all the, all three of the boys got went to the library and did some homework to get ready for the next uh, school season. So we are on the Escapade DLC moment. So let's get into it. Grab my keyboard. It's situated here. Alright. You looked up noticing the sun was fully setting. You had been trying to delay the end of the day for as long as possible. breeze tickled your nose as you sat on your front porch munching on fresh water watermelon slices okay hmm. first one. The snack made you happy. You picked up another slice even though you already had dinner. <clears throat> you were still delighted to make room for, for watermelon. You turned to Cove. You both had been sitting in com comfortable silence for a while now. He sat next to you, close enough for your, your so shoulders to touch. He was hap happily absorbed in his thoughts and his own slice of watermelon. Chuckling, you watched as his face twisted in discomfort. He had to stop chewing, to spit a uh, seed in, into the, the bush. <sighs> well, these two don't make any sense. I mean, you got a seed in your mouth, you got to spit it out, obviously. So, uh, it's down to these other two. Hmm. I'm gonna go with this one. You did the same and spit, spat a, a seed into the bushes. I mean, what else are we supposed to do? Just follow, swallow it? probably choke on it too if you had. The two of you had made a little habit of periodically doing that while you had been snacking. This time he, he decided to make it a, a topic of conversation. I hate how it feels to swallow them. Those hard black seeds. Tell me about it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. We both went back to eating in comfortable silence. St 
still occasionally spitting unwanted seeds into the bushes. Hmm. I wonder if I, I'll have another slice of this one. It says Cove. That one is your third, third already. Is that bad? It tastes really good. It says Cove. want to pick the last one. I'm not sure. Mm, you know, I think I'm going to pick the fourth one right here. No, it's alright. It isn't super filling and there's still a lot left. Why not? Alright. That's all I need needed. He picked up a four slice with confidence and looked at you. His smile stretched ear to ear. A little while later, Cove finished a flinched, uh, making a confused sound. He slowly put his current slice down on the plate next to him. Are you okay? I ask. Yeah, says Cove. He stood up, head tilted back to look at the sky. His feet took him to the middle of the street. Did you notice anything? asked Cove. What did you mean? Uh, what do you mean? Huh. I thought I felt a raindrop, says Cove. The sun's still out. Must be a sun shower. You put down your watermelon slice and hopped off your, your front step. Immediately, you felt a tap on of water on the crown of your head, making you yelp. You're right. <clears throat> Cove was still staring up at the sky and you watched as he began blinking more rapidly. When he finally turned in your direction, his face was blemished. It's a sun shower, says Cove. <coughs> it seemed crazy, but soon you couldn't avoid the drops that began increasing into a light a, a light shower. Maybe it's water. Booming with laughter, Cove kicked off his shoes towards his front door and revealed, uh, reveled in the moment. the last one. It felt kind of special to you. Something rooted you in place and you couldn't quite put your finger on any word to describe the feeling. He 
related, he was jumping and spinning in the rain. There was also a warmth radiating from him. Then you join Cove. You bent over to stand out in the street with him. He smiled at your approach and offered you his hand. You took it. You played in the droplets until you were both dizzy and laughed until your bodies ached. Just as suddenly as the Sprinkling started, it stopped and left you dripping with the smell of wet asphalt and soil, and soil tickling your nose. Cove caught your eyes, running your hand through his wet hair, combing it back. He Frowned. It's over. Okay. I need the breathing treatment for Derek. Drops of rain clinging to his face almost could have been mistaken for tears. He sounded that disappointed. one. You were charmed by Cove. There was still a spark of amusement dancing in your eyes from the sun shower <clears throat> and you couldn't help but smile from ear to ear. What? says asked Cove. Nothing. Just thinking about how fast you committed to getting soaked. He chuckled bashfully. Yeah, it was pretty cool, says Cole. You then looked over at your door and sighed. You knew Ma wasn't going to be happy to see you trailing water into the house. Cole rubbed his arm awkwardly. He must have been thinking the same thing because he watched you sympathetically. It's okay. You could dry off at my house if you want. My parents won't mind. This is Cove. Uh, I'm gonna pick the set one. You're the sweetest guy I know. I, uh... I, uh, thanks. It's not a big deal, says Cove. It is. I could already hear my ma's cries over my wet footsteps being all over the halls. Yeah, it would be bad to put a damper on the day. chuckled at, at his uh, little pun. Cove led you inside and you stepped close to him. Oh, you stayed close to him. We have a ton of spare towels. I've just got to dig them out of the hall closet, says Cove.
clothes are wet too, so I'm probably gonna have to borrow some clothes. Sorry, Cove. I think I'm gonna need to borrow some clothes from you too. Cove didn't have any of the towels yet, but he came back into our shot so you could see him stare at you flatly and roll his eyes. Ha ha. Don't you think my clothes might be kind of big? Uh, I'm gonna pick the second one. I'm not joking. It'd be nice to borrow a shirt at least. raised an eyebrow and a tiny frown paired with a blush appeared on his face. I mean... If you're serious, I'm just gonna dry off my stuff, dry my stuff off, but I could get something for you, says Cove. Thanks, Cove. <clears throat> With that, Cove disappeared and returned in no time. He wasn't making much eye contact, but had towels in hand. Plus, what seemed to be one of his pajama shirts. It was bright pink color with dark brown seashell pat pattern all over. You were certain it looked great on him. So, well, here it is. I hope that works, says Cole. Thanks. You accepted both the uh, towel and the shirt. You wrapped the cloth, cloth around your neck temporarily and took <coughs> a trip to his bathroom to change. The shirt was old but very soft. You already felt more comfortable just thinking about having it on instead of your <coughs> current damp, damp attire. You left your shirt over the shower curtain rod to dry. Patted yourself down with the towel and slipped on and slipped on Cove's shirt. Slipped shirt, uh, slipped, slipped Cove's shirt on. Sorry about that. You wrapped your arms around your torso. torso. The change didn't completely fix. The change didn't completely fix your predicament, but it was definitely an improvement. Even if it was kind of an off fit, you could make it work. You couldn't deny it was a little bit thrilling to wear a piece of his clothing. You almost couldn't believe it was true. Not wanting to keep Co waiting, you promptly returned to the living room. He looked up to greet you after hearing you come back down to the hall. Back down the hall. <clears throat> How'd it go? Is it good? It looks good, says Cove. What? Really? He chuckled in a broken laugh, unsure what the proper thing to say about this kind of situation was. Keeping an eye, keeping eye contact was even more of a challenge for him than before. <laughs> oh, sorry about that.
I think so. You wear it well. I can barely tell it's not really yours and that it's mine. You got the impression that just as you felt some excitement at wearing his clothes, he was having a similar reaction to seeing you in it. Thanks, Cole. You're, You're welcome. welcome. A sudden call caught both of your attentions. I thought I heard voices, says Kara. Cole's mom strolled into the living room with a serious grin. Huh? A curious grin. What happened here? You're both wet, says Kara. There was a sun shower, says Cove. Badass, says Kara. Cove smiled back at, at his parent. We came inside to dry off, says Cove. My moms don't want me going into the house when, uh, when I'm wet. Right. So I told Chippy to come back here, says Cove. <clears throat> that was very sweet of you, Amy, says Kara. She rubbed old Cove's red hair and laughed at the drops of water that shook off. Then a light came to Kara's eyes. What, what do you think? <clears throat> I have an idea. Why don't we go for a drive? It has to be standing around the house, and you're, you'll air drive in no time, says Kara. Cove only offered a shrug and bent a smile to his mom. He looked at you for a real answer. Yeah, let's do it. Fun. That this will be good, says Kara. Kara uh, pulled out her cell phone from her pocket to call your moms. They had sw swapped numbers earlier in in the summer. See you soon. Head on out to the garage. I'll meet you there. In just a minute, says Kara. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, my mom can be so pushy. She gets some idea in her head, and that's what she does. This code. That's okay. Thanks for letting me come. I didn't do anything, says Cove. That wasn't true at all, but you let him get away with that. Come on, says Cove. Cove led you to the car, car and Kara wasn't too far behind. Okay! Okay, to the back, you two, says Kara. Once the three of you were uh, situated inside, Kara started stared at you and drove out the residential area. When she hit the main road, the car sped up and she rolled the back windows down all the way. Hey! Says Cove. Cove started laughing as he kept trying to thin to keep his hair from flying into his eyes too much. Meanwhile, you closed your eyes as the wind whipped against your wet clothes. I said this drive was going to be good for getting air dried, says Kara. Yeah, but I didn't agree to this much air, says Cole. Cove tried pressing the window button, but nothing happened. His eyebrows furrowed in frustration. 
No, no way. way! You disabled the back, says Cole. <laughs> Sorry, can't hear you, says Kara. Ooh, she is mean. Smiling uh, deviously, Kara turned the radio, turned on the radio and tuned, turned it up to be heard over the wind. often enjoyed the event. He yelled into the wind and burst into laughter. Looking over at Cove, you saw him relax. He seemed glad that you were having fun. And then stuck the side of your stuck the side of your leg. Several papers were freed from under the car seats and were blown about. <laughs> ah, oh, they can't go out the windows, says Cove. Cove began to haphazardly <coughs> reach around the space to try and get it all back under wraps. You help frantically. He jumped into his aid immediately, tried to snatch up every single pe single paper, crashing around within your reach. As much as you both caught fistfuls, there was no stopping a few that got sucked out the windows. Cove gasped. Mom, close the window, says Cove. Kara offered no response other than a chuckle. She kept driving. The both of you had sour looks at that. We got most of them, I says. I know, thanks, Cove, says Cove. Oh, excuse me. The sun set completely at that car rode up the windows. Cove let out a big sigh and released the random bits of paper he had in his fist. <sighs> My mom is crazy, says Cove. He ran a hand through his, through his wind-blown hair and laughed with a bit of exasperation. I'm gonna go with the first one. You felt good. had really turned out to be more interesting than you expected. Grinning you happily, you were happily with your odds with whatever else was happening next. Whatever else happened next. <coughs> Cove watched you with interest until his focus was taken by a new comment from his mom. I bet you're not feeling damp anymore, says Carter. No, but now I feel tickled. Mm. 
you started with Cove. You had to take Tony, so he's probably got it in the car. How could he have drived if he didn't have it? Well, you can drive without having your wallet in the car. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, you didn't tell us you trap us like that. My bad, says Kara. Kara continued driving. The radio volume was adjusted for the closed windows, and everyone was sitting more comfortably. Kara lowered the sound even more after pulling into a red light. She took the chance to turn around and caught her koi smirk. So? Does anyone know what we drove past during the dry cycle? Asked Kara. I'm not sure. I want to, says Cove. A movie theater, says Kara. Okay, most places have one somewhere, says Cove. It isn't that late, you know. We can probably still catch the show, says Kara. What? what? Really? Mom, we don't even know what be playing, says Cove. Come on. Come on! That's what makes it fun, says Kara. Yes, the last time. Aren't my moms expecting me back soon? You're gonna make his parents worried, says Cole. Ah, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating impulsive behavior every day, but it's important to seize the moment when you can. You might never have another night like this, says Kara. And don't worry, Chippy. I said I'd watch over you for the night. Not just ten minutes or so. It'll put your parents in... I'll put your parents in the loop about hitting the movies as soon as we get there. That's, um... Uh, I didn't bring any shoes, says Cove. I'm not wearing any either. You lifted your foot. You lift your foot up. Wiggled your toes so Cove could see. How are you going? Gonna go inside barefoot? Asked Cove. I don't know. Yep, I don't know. It's, it's all right. Well, sneak through quickly. No one will notice. You can do it. Just this one, says Kara. You shared a look with Cove. It was comforting that at least you were on this wild ride together. Kara drove into the theater parking lot and shut the engine off. With the unbuckling of your seatbelt, she ushered you and Cove out. Despite being hesitant to leave, once outside, Cove burst into a, a sprint towards the cinema. You were right along, along with him. The tarmac was still wet from before and Co and cold to stand on with bare feet. Inside you notice 
there was no lines. All the current shows had already started. Car paid that no mind and strode up towards the counter with some words of encouragement. A third of the running time it is out as these days. We haven't missed anything, says Car. Meanwhile, Cove stood next to you awkwardly. He shifted from one foot to the other and constantly kept looking around. His shady behavior would have made him more likely to get caught than standing still would have if there was people around to really notice. It was pretty goofy. Still, you consoled him. You poke Cove's arm to get his attention. It'll be okay, Cove. His expression softened into an appeased smile. Yeah, thanks. A sigh of, of relief out uh, of you, Kara returned with the tickets in hand. She quickly herded you to you and Cove towards the showing room. I'm so sorry for the little hiccup, but hold on, we've almost made it home free. Once we sit, sit down, it'll be smooth sailing, says Kara. The lights already off in the showing room, but the movie hadn't started yet. The upcoming movie trailers were still playing. Aha! Yes, says Kara. Keeping her volume in a hushed tone, Car couldn't help but burst with excitement over your luck. You followed her down the walkway until she spotted open seats in the middle-ish area of the theater. Car opponent pointed at the seats, looking over her shoulder at you and Cove, waiting for input. Cove nodded and you decided to give her a thumbs up and she led the way. When you reached your seats, Kara sighed contentedly. Cove gave you a sigh of his own lifted his feet to sit cross-legged instead of keeping them down on the floor. He then leaned over and whispered to you. So... Do you have any idea what the movie is? asked Cove. No, I didn't hear the name or anything when your mom brought bought the tickets. Oh boy, says Cove. After a couple of more previews, the the main event began. It dawned on you quickly that it was a horror film. One about a group of students being haunted by dangerous ghosts.
for a sec. Well, then you, you weren't sure that what to expect, but this was a fantastic surprise. You hope this turned out to be good and scary. Glancing over at Cove, you noticed that he looked less than thrilled with the movie. He bit down on his bottle lip and stared at the screen with trembling eyes. I'm gonna go with this one. You grabbed a hold of his hand. Your fingers wrapped tight around his and he jumped slightly at the expected touch. But his expression softened when he peeked at you out of the corner of his eyes. He gave your hand a squeeze to silently voice support. That made you feel good. Sometimes the, the, the other people in the theater screamed and, or jeered or clapped depending on what was happening, depending on what was happening. <clears throat> your heart was pounding in your chest when the movie finally came to an end. The main character resolved the hunt huntings, but uh, in a dark conclusion, they didn't make it out alive. You stayed to let the credits roll for the theater to clear out. Then it was time to head back to the car. Both you and Cove took the same seats in the back of the car. Even though it was late, the car was exactly Exuding and upbeat, cheerful energy. What a great flick, says Carter. I guess. I guess. It wasn't so bad in the end, says Cove. You enjoyed it, baby? asked Carter. No, I mean, it's hard to explain. I got really tense and I guess that's the point of horror stuff, but I kind of don't want to have to feel like that. Now that it's all over though, it was soft, it was sort of cool to do, to do says Cove. Fan Fantastic! That's great. Chippy, how about, how are you feeling, says Car as Carter. First one. It was awesome. Car smiled at that. I still can't believe they died. It's nice when things aren't all obvious and you don't really know how how it in until you see it. But I wanted to go. I wanted it to go better. This is Cove. spent the rest of the car ride 
the sword in the conversation about the movie. <laughs> so, who's hungry? asked Kara. You were surprised when you realized Kara didn't drive you home, but to a drive through burger restaurant instead. Um. um. Cove interrupted. Change your mind. Don't hesitate to speak up, says Kara. Kara pull, pulled up to the window and proceeded to order one of everything on the value menu. Well, what are you going to do with all of that? asked Kara. Eat it? Really? Really? The whole menu? asked Kara. That's right. There are are only maybe 10 things on it, and they're about a dollar each. I can swing it. And besides, whatever we don't finish, I'm gonna feed to your dad. He'll be in heaven, says Carl. Cove sighed affectionately at his mom's antics. A few minutes later, Kara exchanged her money for multiple bags of food which she quietly tossed to you both in the back seats. She then drove off into the night. Can you pass me something? asked Kara. What should I grab? asked Chippy. I mean, I asked. Surprise me, says Kara. You chose one of the wrapped sandwiches and handed it to her. You had no idea if it was a burger or something else. Thank, thank you. Thanks very much, says Kara. The something that was what has what was happening. Ko shrugged and started pulling food, food out of bags for himself. Ko ended up with some onion rings and, a ha and he happily munched on them. sure to grab something you liked. You weren't even questioning Kara's crazy ride anymore. The adventure continued and you were so preoccupied in, in the back that you almost didn't realize the car had stopped. Kara turned to look over her shoulder. Okay, party people, it seems we've reached the end of the road. Confused, you checked out the window and saw nothing except empty road ahead. And then you noticed it, the now leaving sign. Car took you through the entire town. What are you doing here? Asked Cove. Car turned the ca car around and parked it along the side of the road. I think you both could use a break to stretch your legs, and I doubt 
anything what is doing is going to come through here this time of night. Besides, I need to make a call. So go on. This is Kara. Cove shook his head and got out of the car without a fight. Uh, you followed Cove. You got out and caught up to Cove. He was busy lo looking at the stars and stretching his arms while he strolled around. Being there was pretty cool in your mind. This was a good place to stop if she was going to take us all around town. At least it wasn't done halfway. Cole smiled, glancing from the stars to you. Shortly after you noticed Ko's expression changed, his eyebrows furrow, furrowed and it seemed like he was thinking hard about what he wanted to say next. I'm so, I'm so sorry. sorry. Chippy, I'm really sorry for my mom being crazy tonight. She isn't always like this. Seriously, Mrs. Girl. Why is she being like this now? I ask. I think she feels like she has to get out there and do things with me while she can. And she wants to make the time memorable. This visit has been really different than others and it didn't start off good since COVID. Thinking about how Kara's trip began this summer, you could understand why Cove was thinking along those lines. She probably wanted all the trouble to be worth it in the end. time with your mom around? I ask. Yeah, it's still weird having her and dad in the same house, but I love her. She's my mom. I like hanging out with her most of the time, says Carl. It went silent between you both. You jumped when you heard the sound of a car door closing. Cove Chippy, says Kara. You turn to see Kara by the driver's side, waving. The sight brought you a smile to Cove's face, and she quickly made her way over to where you both were standing. Thanks for waiting, says Kara. I didn't mind, says Cove. My, my baby! How did I end up with such a polite boy? Asked Kara. She ruffled his hair and Cove lowered his head, accepting the compliment. You thought about how interesting it was to see how Cove interacted with his mom. 
anyways, it's kind of cool to be here, right on the edge of town, says Cody. Exactly, we're standing on the trees. I think so too. I knew you'd get it. It's good to appreciate these times and places. Kara let out a big breath of air. <sighs> we should probably call it a night. Huh. As Kara. Yes. The second wind of energy hit you, you bounced on your feet, eager to get a uh, move on. Kara shyly smiled and gestured, gestured to the car. Quietly, you all made your way back to, to it. Cove naturally followed you. Taking the seat nearby in the back with the collection of fast food bags still strung about. You rested your head into the seat as the car roared to life. As you did, Cove leaned in cl close to, to whisper. Hey. hey. Can I talk to your mom? Can I talk to your moms if they don't get mad about tonight for some reason? It was my mom's idea. You didn't have a choice. Let's go. Thanks, I might need it. I hope not, says Cove. No take backs, I say. As I say. I won't, says Cove. Also, don't worry about bringing the shirt back when we get home. Just keep it, says Cove. Until tomorrow, I ask. He simply shook his head. Your face went warm. He was giving it to you. Secretly, you had hope not to give it back. Cole smiled softly at you, but said nothing else. The drive home was smooth and uneventful. The radio, radio was off completely, and you felt your eyelids getting heavy. Head came to rest on Cove. You were too tired to keep your head up, and it felt quite. 
comfortable there. Carl didn't have any issues there. He leaned into it. He must have been exhausted too. You were happy to stay close like that. It was warm and comfortable. When you opened your eyes, you expected to still be in the car, not in your bedroom. It was somehow already morning. You couldn't remember how you ended up here, ended up there. Sitting up in bed, you thought about how last night was quite an experience. It would almost have let felt like a dream if you weren't still wearing the shirt Cove had let you take. It definitely happened. And you were glad that you got to have a spontaneous escapade this summer. And that's the end of it. Our next moment will be soiree. So thanks again for watching on my YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to click the like button and uh, whoops. Yeah, don't forget to click the, uh, like I was saying, don't forget to click the like button and click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Also, if you can, please go to my uh, Patreon and become a Patreon contributor. Again, uh, I really, re really would appreciate it if you could contribute to my Patreon so that um, that money can go to a worthy charity. Like I said, I don't see a dime or a penny of it. It's going to go directly to charity. So I would really appreciate it if you can do that. I'm going to save this here. Yeah, save that. And I will see you guys later.